Hello, good day, mates, and welcome back to. So, I just finished probably the most advanced and hardest project I've done by far. I made the Grinch, but I tried to make him look as realistic and as scary as possible. I lacked entirely on the scary part. But today, I'm going to teach you guys how to make exactly what I made. First, open Blender. If you don't have this installed, then okay. Then I simply just made a new project called Scary Grinch Sculpt, which would soon end up being one of four different projects with the same Grinch Sculpt in it because it contained over six frickin' frackin' million faces. That's a lot of faces. And go to Make Human or Sketchfab or whatever your desired marketplace for downloading royalty-free body meshes is. I use this one but I have no idea where I got it from. Keep the eyes, maybe delete them if you're using Make Human. Then what you want to do is go into edit mode and start choosing all the faces containing the nose and some faces around it. Then delete them. Then click the surrounding edges of the faces you just deleted and on your keyboard, click Alt F. This is going to fill in the faces you just deleted. Now subdivide those faces once or twice. I did this because it was going to be high key hard to sculpt a flat surface on a nose with, you know, there being holes and such. Then later in the sculpt, I realized that he didn't have ears. Like seriously, look at any of the pictures of the Grinch, you'll find that he has no ears. Anyways, then turn on dynamic topology or maybe subdivide it and start smoothing it out to where it looks Grinch-like. Now you can either make Voldemort or the Grinch. Pretty neat. Any Hooters. Go to the voxel remesh thing at the bog and hit remesh. It'll help you out with sculpting and putting in details. Then get your reference images so you don't mess up like the near assassinator did when he tried to mess the 68 year old Andrew frickin Jackson. So then what you want to do is sculpt away. The brushes you want to focus on are the crease brush, the snake hook brush, the draw brush, and the clay thing brush. The clay thing brush just adds that nice and perfect looking realistic detail on there. And if you use the smooth brush, which I also suggest using a lot, it'll make it look even better. Now focus on the body. I wanted to make him look like a creature that's been longing for food in the forests of the mountains and hasn't gotten much in a long time. So I looked up some disturbing pictures of starving Christian Bale. Then he got jacked. Then he got fat. Then he got skinny. Again, good for you, Bale Boy. Now that you've made quite a dastardly looking Grinch, you probably noticed that if you add any multiers or subdivision surface modifiers, your computer will start digging its own grave. So welcome to the world of retopology. We want to turn those four to six million faces to something more like seven or eight hundred thousand. I know it's still a lot, but trust me, it'll definitely help. First thing you need to do is smooth out anything that looks choppy or undivided per se. Then open up a new blend file so that if one crashes, you'll have another one open. And also, when exporting your scene as an OBJ file, it'll count every object you have in your scene as a single OBJ file. Even the eyes or the hair or anything you have. Whether you hide them or not, they'll still end up in there. So then, once you have your new Blender file open, go to File and hit Export as OBJ. It'll freeze, but don't worry, it's doing its job. To make sure that it exported, go to your files and make sure that it's there. But now we want to retopologize. One thing I recommend though is to separate the body and the head into two different parts. You can do this by going into edit mode and just deleting the faces around the neck, meaning that you have to make another blend file with the body in it and another one with the head in it. So do yourself a flippin' favor and look up Instamesh GitHub on Google. Hit it and then scroll down and download it for whatever thing you have, Mac OS or Windows. Who cares about Linux, stupid penguin? Tricks are for kids. Tricks are for kids! So now that you've downloaded and executed it like a frickin' 1600s queen, open it and import your OBJ. Then play around with the face count you want it to be at. And usually, the face count you put in will not be the face count that you get. It usually multiplies its face count by about six or seven, so plan accordingly. Then to export it by putting whatever you want to name it, followed by .obj. Then export that bad boy into a new Blender scene. By now you should have four 
or so blender scenes, but it's all good. You'll probably have a lot more by the time this is over. Don't add a subdivision or nothing at all modifier. Let me introduce you to the flipping love of my life, the multi-resolution modifier. It won't slow down your viewport like the subdiv modifier would, and plus it does some pretty creepy stuff. But even if you do add a subdivision modifier, be careful to not apply anything that would slow down your viewport or else it will die. One thing that you might want to do is import your retopologize head into your first scene with the high poly Grinch and a shrink wrap modifier to the low poly head and make its target the high poly one. This way you'll make sure that you didn't miss any detail. Now append that head back into your new blender scene. We're getting pretty close, my dudes. Now we venture into the beauty of the whole shebang. So I've never actually made these kind of eyes before or many eyes in general. I guess I'll try to explain it to those wanting and curious to know. First, what you'll want to do is model a quick eye, but only insert the pupil, which will be red. If you need more information on how to model an eye, check out my full GA tutorial, which has three views. Oh gee, wild chapa. So first I imported an eye texture that I got off textures.com. Check it out in the description, I guess. To import this without individually putting in an image texture after an image texture, hover over the principal BSDF and then hit on your keyboard shift Control t If that doesn't work, make sure you have the Node Wrangler add-on checked. Then your files should show up. Now, just look at your eye textures and don't be a nerd. Now here comes the weird part. Take a Musgrave texture and a Noise texture and plug them into a Mix RGB set to Mix. Hook it up to a color ramp, which will control its brightness, strength, or intensity. Then, hook the albedo image texture of the eye to the first color slot of the mix RGB set to add, with the second color being an RGB node set to a mid-yellow color. Then, make a new image texture, and call this red pupil, or whatever you want to call it. I mean, we're in America, not, not in, like, Russia. So... You made your image, but set the back to complete white. Then go to the image editor and save it to your files. Now go to texture paint and paint the pupil completely black. Try to get it as circular as you can. If you want to change the stroke, go down to the stroke settings in the toolbar and change it to something more like a rougher shape. Then go back to your shader editor and add another mix RGB, making the color input of the one before it to be the second color slot. Put this mix RGB to add and have the first color be an RGB set to red. Then make the factor of this mix RGB the red pupil image we just made. Then make the factor of this mix RGB the Musgrave noise mixer we just made. You've got an eye! Now we just need the outside of an eye. So add another sphere and make it a little larger than your last eye. Then make sure you turn on screen space reflections with refraction check. Then add a material to this eye, turn the roughness way down, turn the transmission all the way up, my dude. Then go to your material properties and turn on screen space refraction so that you can see the eye underneath. Now go into UV editing mode and hit two on your numpad so that you'll be selecting the edges. Then start from the middle of the top of the head all the way down the back of the head and the neck. Then there will be one line from the top to the bottom. Then hit Control E and hit Mark Seam. This way, when you select the whole thing and unwrap it, you can now add textures and materials and etc. Now it's time to add some skin details. So I found a cool way to add bumps to skin. Make a new image texture and set the back to white. Save your image. Then go to the texture pane and add a new texture set to Voronoi. Then go down and check color ramp. Move the white up where it looks like large or tiny specks in it. Then go to the tool settings and under texture, make sure your texture has been selected and change it to view plane with the ra random checker thing checked. Then just start painting. Try not to go crazy on the eyelids or the lips. But other than that, go nuts or pecans. I show no favoritism. Now that you've got your image ready, remember to save it again. Then go back to the shader editor and put that image texture into the height of a bump node, which you then connect to the normal input. Now check invert and play around with the strength. You can also go into sculpting mode and add some creases under the eyes, on the ridge of the brows, on the forehead, or on the protruded cheeks, or whatever you want to do. Now comrades, we make skin. SKIN!
Okay, so prior to this, I've never actually made any colored skin other than human skin, so this was quite challenging. So I watched an NVIDIA video about this series this girl, uh, Maria Panfilova, did on making this green realistic elf. Uh, to be honest, it, it actually helped me out uh, a lot. So first, download Quixel Mixer or Quixel Bridge. Both are free and in beta, I think. And plus, they're, uh, they're flippin' fantastic. So now that you have Quixel Mixer downloaded, go to Layers and then hit Online. Look up Animal Flesh and click the one that looks like, uh, like this. Download it and then slide it over into the Layers tab. Turn Threshold all the way up, and then also turn up the Preserve Details thing. If it looks like a repeating texture, then hit the Placement tab in the Layers tab and turn the repetitions all the way down on both X, Y, and Z. Then on the top left, hit File and Quick Export. This will export it right to your files. Now go into Blender and import a single image texture with the albedo or diffuse image texture of the animal flesh. Then I tried to stencil an image of a human onto him, but to be fully honest, uh, it did nothing because he's a beast. <sighs> Mr. Beast. Okay, then hook up the animal flesh texture to a mix RGB set to darken. Then go into the description and download these two textures for veins and for lizard skin. Open up two more image textures and put them into the color inputs of a mix RGB set to add with the vein texture being on the bottom. Then take the darken mix RGB and the add mix RGB and mix them with another mix RGB set to overlay. Now add another image texture and name this whatever the heck you want, but make its color a light green. Remember to save it. And now we go to texture paint for the second to last time. Choose a purplish brownish color and paint under the eyes and inside the dots that are on his uh, long lip. I don't really know how to describe it. Then choose a brown color and paint it on his uh, tiny itty bitty spidery nose. Then save your image and go to the shader editor. Add another mix RGB set to the overlay and put your image texture on the bottom with the color input of the prior overlay node on the top. Now we just make lips. Just don't kiss these ones, okay? except for you, Cindy Lou Who. There's an exception. Okay, this has gone way too far. So download the image from the description of the boy's lips. Make a new image texture. Name it Grinch Lips. Make the color white. Then save it and go to Texture Paint. In the Texture tab, import the image of the guy with the lips. Go to the toolbar and make sure the texture is set to stencil. Now you have this weird transparent picture up, but all you need to know to control it is right click is to move it, control right click is to rotate, and shift right click is to scale it. Now paint his lips the best you can on the Grinch lips. Now save it and go back to the shaders tab and hook it into the mix RGB set to overlay. Make the first color the last overlay color output, and make the second color the lip mask. <laughs> the lip mask. Now hook that into the base color and play around with the factors of the mix RGBs until you get something nice. Now for some subsurface scattering. Go into the vertex tab and click on vertex colors and add a new one, naming it SSS, or subsurface scattering, or whatever you want. Now import a vertex color node with the vertex color selected. Make sure you have it plugged into the base color of the BSDF so that you can see what you're doing. Now go to vertex paint, not texture paint. Make sure the color is set to white. But now we want to hit on the paint button and hit dirty vertex colors. Then set the blur iterations to three. You can also go and paint a light gray on the ears, lips, and nose, uh, but I actually decided not to do that. Now add a subsurface scattering node. Plug it into a mix shader with the principled BSDF on the top. Then plug the vertex color into the texture blur. To be fully honest with you, I don't even know if I did this right. I don't even know what I'm doing. Then change the color of the subsurface scattering node to a like a darkish green. Then take the color output of the last mix RGB and feed it into the height of another bump node. Mix the two bump nodes with a mix RGB and make sure both of them are set to invert. Then just 
play around with it until you see what looks good to you. Now for the hair. I found out a really cool way to do hair. So go to the vertex panel and add a vertex group. Then make sure your Grinch head is selected and go to weight paint. Make sure the weight is set to 1. Uh, this will show it as completely red, which means that all the hair will be added to that specific part. And then for the lighter parts, like blue or yellow or green, uh, those will be a lot more uh, lighter hairs. So it'll kind of blur out a bit. Then paint out the eyebrows and the chin hair. Then go back to object mode, add a new particle system. Set it to hair, go to vertex group, and set it to the one you just made. Change the length and the amount. Go to children, click interpolated, and set it both to 10 in the viewport and in the render. Now go to the particle settings and comb it based on some reference footage or, or memory. Just, just be careful. You might be an inception. And you might be dying on the side of the Titanic as well. You just might be Leonardo DiCaprio, my friend. Then do the same for the neck hair, side hair, top hair, and the body hair. So, for the body... Make sure you did the same process earlier for retopologizing the body. Then import it into your scene. UV unwrap it with Smart UV Unwrap. Give it the same skin material you did for the head. Then do the same weight paint hair thing for the body, but only for the part that the camera can see. Then go to the material settings, add a new one, and change the BSDF to a principled hair BSDF. Then change its color to some sort of a darker green and then go into the render panel in each of the particle systems and make sure its material is the hair that you just made. Now you got a frickin' frackin' good looking Grinch, but we need a background and an HDRI. Make sure you're in cycles, that way it looks frickin' awesome. Add a landscape, scale them up real old big and put them far behind your character. Make sure camera clipping is turned all the way up. Then duplicate it and rotate it to make it look like you didn't duplicate it. Then add another landscape, and below you'll see that it has its own little tab to change its look. I changed the third one to like a noise fractal. Then I UV unwrapped all the mountains and straightened out their UVs with a free add-on called text tools that you can also get on GitHub. Yes, of course, it's probably in the description. Now go into Quixel and make your own snowy rocky mountain texture. Then go into Blender and apply that texture to your mountain. You can also get this snowy rocky texture off of textures.com if you don't know how to make textures in Quixel. Then just to add a bit more of a little something something, I went to textures.com and found a snowy mountain photo. I imported it as a plane and set an emission material to it, scaled it up like a mad lad, and put it behind the misty mountains of old. Then for the HDRI, I imported an HDRI image from HDRI Haven called Suburban Field. I mixed it with a sky texture and had a light path node with the is camera ray set as its factor. Then I just set the background node intensity to somewhere around 0.8. So, lads, lasses, and goobers, that was my video. Enjoy, subscribe, and um, yeah, I'll probably stop it with this accent soon. So see you later, my friends.